Okay, so hi guys and welcome to class. Hi to everyone. I hope you have been having a great day so far. Um, welcome everyone to class and to Franco and Sebastian too, who are online with us. So hi guys. Hope you are well. Um, okay, so everyone, so what are we doing? We have been on a journey. You remember a journey is like a trip. We have been talking about places and, you know, using words to show um, facts about a place and to show our opinions, using a lot of adjectives and comparing. You know, maybe you want to compare this place to another place or to complete, compare the place that we were into the whole world. So um, we also looked at travel money. We know how to talk about money when we travel and, you know, if different vocabulary for that. So that was all in the last lesson. So where are we now? Today, we are at the end of the road. So we're going to be reading a travel blog. A travel blog is like something on a website where someone puts their experience about a place they went to. They write. It's called a travel blog. So they write about their holiday. Um, so we're going to read someone else's um, writing about their holiday and we are going to write ourselves and look at a lot of grammar making sure that our English is perfect and correct so let's do that today so we are here the end of the road so as I said a travel blog it could be a website um, it could be someone's like diary really you can just write in your own book um, but it's writing about your holiday, so showing what happened on your holiday, where did you go, who did you go with, what did you do, what did you see. Um, that's what a travel blog is. So, um, for example, I'll just quickly show you. Maybe someone from the USA has written a travel blog for the USA. I'm just going to pick... So this website is The Wandering Soul. So this person has made this website or travel blog um, and they've called USA Travel Guide. So they've given you lots of information, destinations, different places to go to, um, lots of information about currency, where to go, transport. So this is a travel blog. It's somebody giving information and writing about their experience as well. So that's just one example. That's a travel blog. So especially when you want to travel, you will go on the website to read other people's experience. So we are going to, um, as I said, read a travel blog about a bus journey in, um, in Nepal, so next to India. And we're going to answer these questions. Um, but first, let's read together, and then I'll give you a moment to answer the question. So this is the image. So you can see it's a bus journey, remember, like a bus trip. And this is the writing, the travel blog. So somebody is telling us about their trip. So let's read together. Try and make it nice and big so you can see. Okay, so uh, there's no title, but that's fine. Okay, so yesterday was the final day of my bus journey from Laza to Kodari at the border with Nepal. It's the highest road in the world. And it's also a very long journey. We traveled for three days through the Himalayas. And you could see the north side of Everest. In the afternoon, we were only five kilometers from Kudari. And suddenly, the bus stopped. 
The driver got out and looked at the engine. For the next three hours, he tried to fix the engine. Some of the other passengers got angry, but he couldn't start the bus. Finally, all the passengers got out and started to walk to the border. I felt sorry for the bus driver because he looked sad and lonely. But I also wanted a good hotel and a hot meal. So I left the bus too and walked to Kadari. Later that night, the bus arrived in town. Okay, so we know the place, it was in Nepal. Now, like yesterday, we don't want to write information about the place. We don't want to talk too much about like what you did last lesson. We want to talk about what happened. So you can see what happened to this person. It was a bad experience. The bus broke down. That means the bus stopped. Um, he was going from one place to another place and the bus stopped. The people had to get out. They were all tired. They were hungry. So this is an, a bad experience on his trip. And this is the writing for her. So you can see that he was expressing his feelings, you know, being angry, tired. Um, and yeah, it's a nice, nice writing. So we can also see, remember, we used our adjectives to say what we feel about the trip. So uh, to the noun, it's a long journey. So that's a very long way. Um, he then, another adjective is um, yeah, maybe just that one. I can see that there's another adjective with the EST. Do you remember which one is that called? Is that the comparative or the superlative? The EST. So I've got the adjective high but it has the EST ending. Is that comparative or superlative? Definitely. It's a superlative. So it's saying that it's the highest road. So the, the road is very high in the world. You remember you're comparing the road, not to another road, but in the world. The EST means I'm comparing it to many things in the world. He didn't say the road is higher than the road in Brazil or he's not comparing two things, or he's not just talking about one place. It's a high road. He wants to compare it to say, wow, this is the highest road in all the, the whole area, the whole place, the world. So that's how we know this is an adjective, high, but it has the EST. So it's, a compar it's comparing it. It's comparing the noun, the road. It's the highest road in the world. Okay, um, good. Let's answer some questions. I'll give you one minute to read it again for yourself and answer question one and we'll come back, read it together. Okay, so one minute. Okay, so let's have a look at the some questions. So we were reading this paragraph about somebody's journey in Nepal and they were on a bus journey. So where was the writer? the person who's talking and writing about their trip, where were they? Uh, yeah, going from Laksa to Kodari. Yeah, that's where they were. They were going from this place to this place. Yeah. How many days was the journey? Mm -hmm. Three days, yep. So make sure you're looking at all your verbs. That's a past verb, was, because the action is not happening now. So how many days was the journey? Where was the writer? And if you notice all these questions, they start with the Ws or with the how. So just take notice of that. 
That's how we make a question. We can use a W question, what, where, when, why, who, or how many, how did. Next question, how, uh, what could the passengers see? Yeah, the north side of Everest, so that big snow mountain, Everest. They could see the north side of it. Hey, Oscar. What happened to the bus? It broke down. Yeah, so we know because it's not a living person, she, he, it's an it. The bus is not, it's an object. So it, the bus, broke down. It stopped. So broke down, stopped. I don't want to just say stopped because stop just means it could continue to move. So it broke down. It's probably the better um, action because broke down means there's a problem with the engine. Who tried to fix the engine? Now, who is a question about people? The bus driver? Yeah. So the bus driver? How did the passengers feel? So we need to use some words that show feelings. They were angry. Yep. So we can say they, because it's plural, they were angry. There was many people, so they were angry. Why did the writer feel sorry for the bus driver? Yeah, because the bus driver looked sad and lonely. So it must have been a bad feeling, a sad feeling. So he felt sorry for him. Why did the writer walk to the border? Yeah. Good. Yeah, so we don't know if it's a he or she. Um, so he or she wanted a good hotel and a hot meal. Yeah, they, were, they just wanted to relax. They were tired. They just wanted a good hotel where they can go inside, have a shower, lie down, relax, sleep, and a hot meal. So they were hungry. Okay, good. So now we um, have read about somebody's experience. So let's look at some grammar when we write. We've got these words, so and because. So so and because connect um, one part of a sentence to another part of the sentence. So they go in the middle. So that means they there is no comma before them. There is no full stop, nothing, because they connect one part of the sentence to another. So how can we use them? In the first way, we must put an action and then say because and then the reason. Now, I'll explain this in a moment. In the second way, we put the reason, so we say something happened, and then we say so, but we must actually put a comma here, and then we say the action. So, for example, let's look at the first one. The action is, I felt sorry for the bus driver. That's an action because I'm doing something. I'm feeling something. I felt sorry for the bus driver. Now, I want to say the reason. So I say because, and then I say the reason. So I must use this word because to begin to talk about why. So the reason is saying why. Why did I feel sorry for him? Because he looked sad. If I said for number two, I'm going to give a reason. I wanted a good hotel and a hot meal. That's something. I want something to happen, a reason. I wanted this. And then I said, so, now I talk about an action. What did I do? So I left the bus and walked to Kodari. That's an action. It's a doing verb. So I left the bus. Okay, so for number two, which um, sentences gives the reason, then the action? That would be the first one, the first one that I 
gave the sentence, I felt sorry for the driver because he looked sad. And this one tells us that the reason and then the action. We have so. Let's look at more examples. So if you're not yet sure, don't worry, we'll do more examples. So if I said, let's have a look at these sentences. We need to see if we need to put so or because. Okay, so I'll leave the rules here. If I said, we called a taxi, that sounds like an action because I'm doing something. Okay, it's a, it's a doing verb. Called a taxi. Do I say so or because? Because. Now I'm going to give you the reason why did I do that? Why did I call the taxi? So because is like saying why. Because we were late for the meeting. That's why I called a taxi. Because we were late for the meeting. So can you see that this sentence must have because? Not so. Because. The train was late, comma, so I can see that there's a comma. Yeah. So now I'm going to give the action. So we waited. That's an action on the platform. That's the place where you stand when the bus comes or train. So the train was late. That's a reason, something happening. We had a drink of water. Because, I want to say, why did I do that action? The reason, why? Because it was very, because it was a very hot day. It started raining, comma. So, it started raining. So, what did they do? What's the action? They ran home. So, something happened and then I did an action. I wanted to sleep comma, so I stayed at a hotel. You can see the action, I stayed. That's a doing action. We hired a car because there were no trains or buses. So you can see the action is in the beginning. I hired a car. I called and got a car. I hired a car. I needed some money, comma, so I looked for a cash machine. Yeah. So, and the last one, my friend lent me $10. We know what lent means when you give someone something. They lent me $10 because I didn't have any cash. Okay, uh, let's look at this writing. I'll give you a moment to read it. Oh, we'll read it together first and then um, actually I'll give you a moment to read it and put the answers in and then we'll read it together. Okay, so let's read it together with the answers. Mm. So it was the end of our family holiday And so there's a difference. When we say and, it's like we give another action. And we were very tired. So there's two action. And connects one sentence with another sentence, but two different actions. So in the first action, it was the end of our family holiday. It came to an end. And the second, and we were tired. That's another action, another what happened. We had a long car journey from Switzerland to England. Yeah, I can see a comma. So we left early in the morning. Now, so comes after, uh, comes before the action. So you can see that's what I did. So I left early. That's an action. I left early in the morning. The journey was easy at first. Because now I want to give the reason. Why? Why was it easy? The journey was easy. Why? Because there wasn't much traffic at that time of day. Comma. There wasn't. 
um, much traffic at that time of day, comma. Um, but at midday, we needed to stop at a garage near Paris. Day. Um, but, yes, but at midday, so when you use but, it's because you're going against what you said before. So, for example, today is beautiful, but many things happened bad. I lost my thing or this or that. So, but is like you're changing what you said before. So, she said there wasn't much traffic, but at midday, we needed to stop at a garage near Paris. Because, so you want to give the reason? Because there was a problem with the engine. The garage, that's the place where you fix a car. In America, they call it garage. Here we call it the service, um, the car service place. But the car service place couldn't fix the car for 24 hours, comma. So... So we needed, now I'm going to give the reason, uh, the action. What did I do? So we needed a hotel for the night. The nearest hotel was at Disneyland. We went there and, no, I didn't change what I said before. We went there. If I said we went there, but um, then we got stuck on the road and couldn't get there, like, but must be against what you said before, but it didn't. It's another action. We went there and it was the best part of the holiday. Okay, so in this um, writing, we learned to use so, we learned to use because, we know how to use and, and we also have but. So there's four words. Um, <clears throat> I'll give you some more examples. So now that we know so and because, I love Spanish. Now I want to give you an action. So I traveled to Colombia to learn the language. The first one is a reason. The second part is an action. What did I do? I'm going to give you an action first. I studied English. That's an action. Subject, verb. It's in the past simple. I studied English. Because, I want to tell you why, because I wanted to live in Australia. Okay, so we're going to practice using and, but, so, and because. How? We are going to write our own journey. Okay, so you're going to write your own journey. Where were you? When was it? Who, were, who was there? Were you there with your friend, your parents, um, your husband, your wife? And what happened? Try to add more of what happened, just like this um, driver. You remember this story with the bus driver? It broke down. The people were tired and hungry. So I want you to remember a trip that you went to. Maybe it was when you arrived in Australia, something happened, or when you went somewhere else. Uh, what happened? So. You know, where were you? Just make a, a quick sentence. You know, I traveled to Paris in um, in France. When was it? I went there two years ago. I, I went with my best friend. And then talk about what happened. So try and pick not many things. We went here, we went there. Try and pick one moment that you can talk about. Maybe it was a bad moment. Like, oh, my God, I lost my bag and the airport and I had to go get, you know, I, I didn't have my clothes on me because my bag was in the clothes and I was so upset. So try and pick one moment. Or maybe um, when I arrived there, our hotel, we couldn't find our hotel and we were going from one place to another place and it was a bad, we felt very whatever. Or maybe it was a good thing. Um, you know, something special happened. Maybe we were sitting in a restaurant and somebody came and I don't know maybe something good happened we saw some people we knew or we made some friends so 
make sure you pick one moment. Don't talk about everything that you did in your trip, but pick one moment. Maybe it's a good moment. Maybe it's a bad moment that happened in that trip. Okay, don't forget to use words like so, and, because, but, and also remember it's in the past simple. This is, this is an, these are actions that already happened. So you're using your past simple. Now upload it here. You'll see I have, um, it's this post here. So it's not here, you'll find it, it's in here. Okay, so write a short travel blog about a journey, that means a trip, or a place you visited on holidays. Okay, so try and make it the same size, like the writing in here. Don't write too short. You know, try and write, if you have a photo from that trip exactly, you can upload it. But remember, the idea is really to talk about what happened, one moment. Pick one moment. Okay, if you, if you don't have a moment, make it up. Try and practice your English by... Um, writing as much as you can. Okay, I'll give you a few minutes. We'll come back. We'll have a look at the grammar um, and look at the English. Okay, so we'll come back soon. Okay, let's have a look at some of them. So we're writing your own journeys, your own experience, your own trip. Um, Dickerson with a beautiful photo. Wow. Okay, let's read about his experience. So a month ago, I was in El Choco, Colombia. Full stop. So that has to be a full stop. Unless you want to connect it by saying which. So we can connect that sentence, which is a wonderful place, quiet, and with a lot of nature. Full stop. Again, very long sentence. Um, so I'm going to put a full stop there. Start the new sentence. The natural places are what I value most of the destination I visit. So maybe the natural places here are what I valued the most during my trip. Okay. So we want to be talking about this trip, not in general. So we don't start a sentence with there. We say, um, I could see sea turtles. And not I could, could means if you want to. It sounds like more an action that you did do, I saw. So we're going to use the see in the past, irregular, say saw. If you say could, it's like if you want to. It's when you're telling someone, oh, you should go to El Cocho because you can see this, you could do that, you could go here. But when you're talking about your own experience, it must be, I did this, I saw this, I went here. You know, like it's more, um, I saw, not I could, I did do it. I saw sea turtles, crystal clear waters, and unparalleled sunsets. Now, again, you got to be careful. You can't put a comma, full stop. This, they were some incredible holidays, plural. I think you're only talking about only one holiday. This was an incredible holiday. Yeah, so you're talking about, um, we know when, a month ago, I was, we know the place uh, in Colombia, and you talked about what it was like, which is a wonderful place, which is a wonderful, quiet place with a lot of nature. The natural places here are what I valued the most during my trip. So that means that um, Dickerson is telling us that nature is the most important part that he values, that he enjoys, and uh, is thinks is very, very important. So during means like at, dur um, at the time of my trip. And then he told us what he did. I saw sea turtles, crystal clear waters, and wow, sunsets like this one. And then he ended up by saying, this was an incredible holiday. How long did you go for? I think maybe. Or who did you go with? Were you by yourself? Who did you go with? 
Who did you go with? Um, you should add. <laughs> so uh, a month ago, I was in El Cocho, Colombia with some friends, which is a wonderful, quiet place. Okay, so make sure you try and I have added before. It tells you think about these questions. So make sure you're writing where were you, when was it, who were you with, and what happened. Okay, very good. And again, that looks amazing. And you can just tell you're very relaxed and, you know, enjoying the peacefulness of, a, of that sunset. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. A month ago. It's a very recent trip before you were in Australia. Yeah. Okay, thank you for sharing. Um, next one. So if you are waiting, you can have a look at the old students because they wrote in this post as well. Um, Jonathan. Last year, I visited, uh, I think in English we said the Dominican Republic with with my aunt, full stop. So that's one sentence. How do I know when to start the next sentence? Because you can see there's a subject, we. So that needs to be a new, um, a new sentence. We stayed at, so when we, we say we stayed at, I stayed at the Hilton, I stayed at the Rio Hotel. We stayed at the Rio Hotel. We arrived on Monday at 4 p.m. You don't need to put o'clock when you speak because... 4 p.m. But we hadn't had lunch. That's good. Very hard grammar here um, in the present, sorry, the past perfect. So we didn't, same as saying we didn't have lunch yet. So we hadn't had lunch and we were very hungry. So very good. So again, don't forget to use so, but, and, because. So we, you need to repeat the subject. So we went to a restaurant so we went to the hotel's restaurant in the same hotel yeah we don't say for something to eat to get to get something to eat and then good you're using and here and then we left and then we went to walk on the beach. It was a good journey. Yeah, full stop. It was very fun and relaxing, but good uh, use of but, but it was very short because it, mm. yeah, it was only three days. So we want to go there again. Yeah, that's good. I like that. You're adding your feeling. It was a short trip, so it was good, but it was too short. We want to go. So we want to go there again. You're showing an action. So that's really good. Let's read it again. Last year, I visited the Dominican Republic with my aunt, or we say with my auntie. So we use both aunt or auntie. We stayed at the Rio Hotel. We arrived on, uh, we say on a Monday, when you're talking about the past, we arrived on a Monday at 4 p.m., but we hadn't had lunch yet. I might put yet. So like you're waiting still. We hadn't had lunch yet. And maybe so, because you could say, um, so we were very hungry. Uh, because you've already done, we hadn't had lunch yet and were very hungry. So we went to the hotel's restaurant to get something to eat. I might, instead of, it's a long sentence, afterwards, we went for a walk on the beach. It was a good journey. It was very fun and relaxing, but it was very short because it was only three days. So we want to go there again. Good. Thank you for sharing. And I hope you can see the use of so, but because and good I will refresh it so keep adding 
And if you have finished, you can read the other comments. Brian, a little bit short. Are you sure you're finished? <laughs> you can add more. Try to add more. Um, Jimena, this is the image. Wow. Okay, my last holidays, my last holiday was spectacular with my daughter in Santa Marta. Is that Colombia? Yeah, so again, make sure, because when you're writing, you're writing for people. Like, remember, a travel blog means it's going to be on the internet, for example. So you have to give details. Um, you got to imagine somebody's reading it and they have no idea where is Santa Marta. It's the same if I said to you, oh, I went on a holiday to Kangaroo Island and it was amazing. You think, where is Kangaroo Island? So you must, if you want to say the name of the place, but give the country. So my last holiday was spectacular with my daughter in Santa Marta, Colombia, full stop. So I know that there's a new sentence because you've got a subject. We visited the Tyrona Park, which is uh which is which is a very beautiful which was very beautiful which was very beautiful full stop so can you see how you've got a comma and then a subject so make sure full stop and then put a capital for we so we visited the tyrona park which was very beautiful we walked so subject verb we walked for three hours but we were very tired i don't think but it's only we walked for three hours but we were meant to walk for four so this is just and we walked for three hours or actually so we were plural so we were very tired when we arrived, but we were very tired, full stop. When we arrived, we saw the view, we swimming in the sea. So when we arrived, we saw this amazing view, which is in the picture. We saw this amazing view and swam in the sea beautiful so lots of good past tense in there um, connecting words like when we talk about how long we walked for three hours so we were very tired when we arrived we saw this amazing view and swam in the sea and this is that amazing view and the water that you swam in so beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Okay, Oscar. In September, we were in Paris with Juanita. Um, I would put that with in September, I was in Paris with Juanita. We, so again, there's a full stop because I can see that's the start of a new sentence. So in September, it's a time phrase, so we can put a comma. In September, I was in Paris with Juanita. We visited Disneyland because since, you cannot use these words to get, uh, because since we were little, we loved to get to know the big part. You could, okay, we visited Disneyland because ever since we were little, We wanted to go there. That's beautiful. So we say ever since. Like it means that both you and her, ever since you were little, you always wanted to go there. So that's beautiful. We visited Disneyland because ever since we were little, we wanted to go there. We snuck onto the train on the way out of the park because we were, because we had we had the wrong tickets. 
we snuck onto the train when you were going home because you had the wrong ticket yeah. and uh, you couldn't. What was your ticket for? Ah, different like place where yeah. you've the ticket for this bus to go this location, this one for this location. So you have to quickly sneak into the bus to get, yeah, because you had the wrong ticket. So that's good. He told us what happened on his trip. Um, so it was good. You finally got home. So yeah, in September, I was in Paris with Juanita. We visited Disneyland because ever since we were little, we wanted to go there. We snuck onto the train on the way out. So that means like when they were finished um, out of the park because we had the wrong tickets. Um, so we finally made it home. So we finally made it home after a beautiful day. Would you say it was a beautiful day? Yeah, I feel like it was a little bit too short. So always your ending must be like a nice finishing sentence. So we finally made it home after a beautiful day. Beautiful, thank you for sharing. Sebastian, and there's a photo, Sebastian too. Um, okay, on our last holidays, we traveled to the Blue Mountains in Sydney or of Sydney, yeah, to the Blue Mountains in Sid of Sydney. I would love to go there. I always want to go there um, because they are one of the main touristic attractions of the city. I think not the city, the, the state, because it's outside of the city, so it's in the state in New South Wales. So on our last holidays, we travelled to the Blue Mountains of Sydney because they are one of the main touristic attractions of the state. To get there, you needed, so we need to put this in the past, to get there, you needed to take the train from Central Station as it is the cheapest way to get there. Besides, besides the mountains, so next to, is that what you mean? Besides the mountains, you will find a theme park. So you will not only see mountains, but, this is a good use of but, but also see mechanical attractions used in the old mines of the region. That's interesting. So next to this mountain, Blue Mountains, there's an area where it used to be a mining town where they used to dig to the ground. So interesting. I didn't know that. Besides the mountains, I'm going to take off you will find because I want to I want you to talk about your experience. So besides the mountains, um, there was a theme park. So we not only saw so we not only saw not only saw the mountains but also saw mechanical attraction att used in the old mines of the regions. We visited the place to see this impressive mountain formation because we really like the soil formations. Interesting. So they're both interested in the land and the soil and ground. And that's so cool. That's what they used to use in the mines. So I'm guessing this was... Um, Maybe, when, yeah, when they went under the ground. and That's really cool. So there's the mountains. So beautiful. I want to go here. Beautiful. So you and your wife. So thank you for sharing, um, Sebastian, too. Um, the next one, I'll just refresh. Remember, if you have finished, you can read the other post to practice your English. Um, finished, you said? Okay, let's have a look. 
Nice. So you started with the time. Four years ago, I traveled. Remember, it's in the past. I traveled to San Andres. Is that a country? Hey, Colombia. Yes. I don't know if it's, I remember. I know it's far away. It's a little island. Yeah. yeah, yeah I know. Col uh, part of Colombia. Yeah. yeah. So four years ago, I traveled. We've got to make sure past simple because the action is finished. It's not happening now. It's finished four years ago. So four years ago, I traveled to San Andres, Colombia. It's a beautiful place. Now, that's fine if you're talking in general, but I really want to talk about your experience. So it was a beautiful place. I traveled with my parents and my brother. Nice. So he said, who? I traveled with my parents and my brother. I enjoyed visiting this city. Is it a, It's a city, San Andres? Yeah. yeah. So I enjoyed visiting this city because there was, you got to remember past, because there was a lot of variety of seafood. You said you like food. Yeah, same to me. Um, because there was a lot of variety of seafood. I might put there was a lot of seafood variety. The landscapes were incredible. You don't need a comma before and, that's American writing. Um, the landscapes were incredible and the sunsets were beautiful. Sunsets, it's plural. They were very beautiful. I don't want to talk about you could visit. I really want it to be your experience. So I, and I visited some nearby islands where I saw some fish. Yep. And I visited some nearby islands where I saw some fish. The only thing I didn't, this is nice, a negative and it's a past simple, I didn't like was the weather because it was very hot. Oh, that sounds like my place because <laughs> I like hot. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so the only thing I didn't like was the weather because it was very hot. Good, good use of because and, um, yeah. So four years ago, I traveled to San Andres, Colombia. It was a beautiful place. I traveled with my parents and my brother. I enjoyed visiting the city because there was a lot of seafood variety. The landscapes were incredible and the sunsets were very beautiful. And I visited some nearby islands where I saw some fish. The only thing I didn't like was the weather because it was very hot. Good. Thank you for sharing. Um, Shirley. My last holiday was in Melbourne. I did some laundry because my clothes were dirty. And then I went to the beach. The tram was broken down. Bad experience. So very good. What did you do? What action? So we took a taxi. But when we got there, it started to rain. When I got home, my clothes were soaked by the rain. So. I had to wash them again. I love this because this talks about what happened and you're saying experience. Very good. I'll just read it one last time. My last holiday was in Melbourne. I did some laundry. Um, When? Maybe you didn't say when. Oh, that's fine. My last holiday was in Melbourne. Uh, maybe we can start this. When I was there. When I was there, I uh, no one day, one day while I was there, I did some laundry because my clothes were dirty. And then I headed to, I wouldn't say you went to the beach because then you, you talked about the tram first and then I went to the tram to go to the beach. So I would have maybe made it sound that way. And then I, and then I, and then I went to the train station to go to the beach. Okay. When I arrived at the station, the tram was broken down. So we took a taxi. 
But when we got there, it started to rain. When I got home, my clothes were soaked by the rain, so I had to wash them again. Very good. That's like a nice connecting story. Um, perfect. Franco, <laughs> the upside down smiley face. <laughs> okay. A few months ago, so again, that's a time expression. We can put a comma. A few months ago, I took the destination of travel to Australia. I took the decision. We don't, yeah, I made a decision. That means I decided. I made a decision to travel to Australia to learn English. You don't need to say language and make sure it's a language, it's a name, it's a language, so it has to be capital. So a few months ago, I made a decision to travel to Australia to learn English. The travel was, yeah, not the travel, the journey. Because it's like saying the trip. The journey was very long. It was more than 35 hours. Yeah, I know. I did 35 hours. It's so tiring. So the journey was very long. It was more than 35 hours. The first city... I have, not I have, because that means you're still doing the action. Um, the first city I visited, it's a simple, past simple, finished action. The first city I visited was Sydney. We don't just say beautiful city. You, we say what a beautiful city. So that's the expression we say like, oh, what a beautiful day. What a beautiful city. The bad news was that the company, the company, the flight company, I'm not sure who lost your ticket, your suitcase. The bad news was that the my flight, is that right, uh, Franco? My flight lost my suitcase. So I didn't have a place to stay. I don't know why it's connected so, must be connected to the suitcase. Like I, I lost my suitcase so I didn't have clothes. I lost my suitcase so, yeah, I didn't have clothes. Um, Are you there, Franco? I'm here. Yeah, so did the flight it's lose an, your... Yes. It's okay. an and Noah, so... Aha, uh -huh. and I didn't have a place to stay. Good, but a good friend of mine found me a place. And yeah, and it all got resolved. Except, I like that. Except can be connected to that sentence. Except for the... I don't know whose suitcase you're talking about, so I'm going to say my, except for my suitcase that appeared one week later. Yeah, that arrived or that appeared. Yeah, that more like that arrived or that I got one week later. That I got one week later. That's so bad when they lose. I, it happened to me as well in Athens. So, yes, so the bad news was that my flight lost my suitcase and I didn't have a place to stay. But, I like using but here, but a good friend of mine found me a place and it all got resolved, except for my suitcase, which I got one week later. <laughs> and the emoji. Good. So, very good. Did you see that he used and, but um, in his writing? So thank you for sharing. Okay, has everybody uploaded? We'll check some more writing. Okay, Adriano. Ah, oh, that looks like a fun trip with your friends, amigos. <laughs> or how do you say in, in Portuguese? Oh, amigos. Okay, yes. That looks like a fun trip. Somewhere outdoor camping in a farm. Cool. 
Okay, let's read what Sylvester, what, uh, sorry, Adriano says. So, September was my last holiday in Brazil. You don't need a comma because remember where that, which a connecting word. So, you don't put a comma before it, and you don't put a comma. So, September was my last holiday in Brazil where I got together with some friends at a farm to celebrate the new cycle that would come with the change. Do you mean the new year? Oh, ah, to celebrate, ah, my, to celebrate my, to celebrate my, um, So it was to celebrate your new adventure of traveling to Australia. Like they were wishing you good luck. Uh, they were, it's a farewell party. So I might say uh, with some friends at a farm to farewell me. That means to say goodbye, to farewell me for my new adventure of traveling to Australia. Oh, that's nice. Just for you? That's so good. That's good friends. So it's to farewell. That means to say goodbye. They did a part. They will, it's not a, I don't know if you'd say it's a party, but it's just a get together, which I like that you said that. We got together with some friends at a farm to farewell me for my new adventure of traveling to Australia. So September was my last one in Brazil where I got together with some friends at a farm as they wanted to farewell me for my new adventure, for my new adventure of traveling to Australia. That would come with the change. Yeah, so I might put it how I said it. We had a barbecue and shared stories. Yeah, beautiful, full stop. It was a unique moment very beautiful nice ending well it was a unique special moment i might just put one more word there it was a unique special moment could i say that i'll never forget that i will never forget beautiful so september was my last holiday in brazil where i got together with some friends at a farm as they wanted to farewell me for my new adventure my new adventure to Australia. We had a barbecue and shared stories. It was unique. It was a unique and special moment that I will never forget. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. That must have been such a fun night, sharing stories. And Was it just for one night? Was it one night? How many nights? Three, three days, two nights. Yeah, that's nice. That would have been so good, doing barbecue. and Was the weather good? Yeah. Oh, good. Okay, Anna. So Anna says, my last vacation was in the Galapagos Islands. So Galap in Ecuador. Islands, uh, comma, Ecuador, in February 2022, full stop. So remember, because full stop and then a subject, I, so not comma. My last vacation was in the Galapos Islands, Ecuador, in February 22. I remember it perfectly. Nice. Because those days, uh, not those days, I remember it perfectly because while I was there, I was able to create memories with my mother and enjoy the beautiful places that the islands had to offer. We say oh, what the islands had to offer. It's just a... Our trip from um, Guayaquil to the islands was approximately two hours by plane.
Beautiful. I think it needs a little bit of an ending. Um, a very special memory. It needs a little bit of an ending. So rather than end it with, you know, details about the trip, end it with a nice feeling, like it was a special trip. I'll always remember this. Um, so don't end it with details of the trip, but with a feeling, you know? Yeah, so that's nice, nice writing. So that's why I wrote a very special memory. Um, okay, my last vacation was in this island's Ecuador. I remember it perfectly because while I was there, um, I was able to create memories with my mother and enjoy the beautiful places that the islands had to offer. Our trip from this to the islands was approximately two hours by plane. A very special memory. Beautiful. Thank you. Lewis. Wow. Is this a real, were you in this photo? In where? Oh, Western Australia. That is so cool. It's white sand. I remember you wrote about this trip. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah, that's right. I remember now. So this one is, I'll read it in a moment, is, uh, wow, La Lancelin Sand Dunes. Wow. This has, you, you saw some very nice places in two trips. Amazing. In Western Australia. Okay, let's read what Lewis said. So, in August of this year, I went with some friends on a vacation is more American language. We say on a holiday. It's more American. So you, you could say it, but it's in Australia, we say more holiday. So in August of this year, I went with some friends on a holiday to a place called La Lancelin Sand Dunes WA. In WA, it is a very it is a very beautiful desert. It was a very beautiful desert in which my friends and I, that's very good, my friends and I rode ATVs on the white sands. It looks like it was a white sand. On the white sands. After that place, we went to a beach seven minutes away by driving, yeah, or by car. Um, after that, maybe just after that, we went to a beach seven minutes away by car. And I think it is the most beautiful beach I have ever seen in Australia. Yeah, and I think it is the most I had a lot of fun. We say during. I had a lot of fun during this trip. Yeah, nice ending. So again, I like how Lewis has ended with a feeling, not details of the trip. That makes very good writing. So in August of this year, I went with some friends on a holiday to a place called La Lassalene Sand Dunes in Western Australia. It was a very beautiful desert in which my friends and I rode ATVs on the white sands. After that, we went to a beach seven minutes away by car. And I think, I don't know about saying I think, seven minutes by car. Until today, it is the most beautiful beach I have ever seen in Australia. I think something like this, until today, because, you know, you might see another beach. So you're saying, until now, this is the best beach I have ever seen. So you've got to say ever, because it pushes like ever that I have ever seen. Beautiful. Until today, it is the most beautiful beach I have ever seen in Australia. I had a lot of fun during this trip. Good riding. Thank you. Okay. Did I check everyone's riding? Did everybody upload? I think we did upload. Okay, so um, everybody has uploaded. If you have finished, we can have a break and we'll come back. Uh, and then we'll look at, um, we're going to do role play. So we're going to get into groups and create stories and watch you guys perform stories. 
So let's have a break. And remember, if you want, you can read all the posts to practice your English. So that was good. Writing about our, our journey, our trips to a place we visited on holidays. Okay, so let's have a break and we'll see you shortly. Okay, so welcome back. Um, okay, so we're actually going to continue um, because tomorrow we'll do a review and we'll do the test early on Friday. So the final journey, remember we've been speaking about journeys, going to places, um, having experiences, talking about experiences, using our adjectives, comparing. Um, okay, the final journey. So I can see here it says, in Alaska, the stockeye salmon swims up the river. It's a dangerous journey. So adjective, dangerous. Journey is a noun. It tells us where in Alaska. And salmon, that's a type of fish. It swims up the river. And there's a brown bear. Okay, so let's... Um, Let's look at some words before we watch the video, some vocab. So if I say, okay, so if I say, um, when I sit in the sun, my skin doesn't turn brown, it turns red. What does skin mean? When I sit in the sun, my skin doesn't turn brown, it turns red. So skin is E, the outside part of the human or animal's body. That's the skin. Yeah, so E. And turn is F. It means to change, to change color. Like, um, to turn, to change a different color. The water in this river is very shallow. What does shallow mean? The water in this river is very shallow. It's the opposite of deep. Deep is like it goes down so long, deep. But shallow is not deep. It's shallow. It's not very deep. So from the ground to the top of the water, it's it's small distance, not deep. A baby's skin is smooth. So this is an adjective, shallow, smooth is an adjective. If this baby skin is smooth, what does that mean, smooth? Nice to touch, not rough. It's nice to touch, soft. The same as soft, smooth. When an animal dies, its body decays. Decays means... To break up and go back into nature. So when you put bury a body in the ground, it will decay, you know, and it will go like into the ground. The chicken lays eggs. To lay an egg means when a female bird pushes an egg from her body to lay an egg. So birds lay eggs. Uh, okay, now we're going to watch a video, and as we watch a video, which has to do with a journey, the final journey, um, you're going to put in number what happens in the video. So I can see they already did the first one. The stockeye salmon start their journey up the river. That's the first thing that we see in the video. So I'll just show you a stockeye salmon. Um, a sock. Sock eye salmon is this kind of fish. Okay, so it looks like this. Very interesting looking fish. That's the stock eye salmon in Alaska. 
Okay, let's watch the video. And as I said, as you watch, put what happens first, second, last, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So there's a lot of uh, interesting sentences here. Okay, so let's watch. These cold rivers are in Alaska. The rivers are full of a type of fish called sockeye salmon. The sockeye salmon are born in these rivers, but they swim to the ocean. Then, at the end of their life, they return to the river and start their final journey hundreds of kilometers up the river. It can take weeks, and only one in every thousand salmon will finish it. At the beginning of the journey, these huge brown bears are the biggest danger as the fish try to jump past them. If the salmon get past the bears, their bodies start to change. Over the next few weeks, the head of the male salmon turns green. Its mouth grows longer. Its skin turns red and becomes smooth. Scientists still don't know why this happens. Finally, the sockeye salmon arrive in the shallow water where they were born. The males start to fight over the females. Then, the female salmon lay their eggs in the bottom of the river. Finally, both parents die, and their bodies decay into the river and become food for the next salmon, which grow and start the journey again. Okay, so we watched it a few times. Um, let's answer some questions. So we have, what happened first in the video? We saw that the stockeye salmon start their journey, um, start their journey up the river. That's number one. Then what happens? Number two, what's the next step that we saw happening? <clears throat> yes, the fish tried to jump past the brown bears. Number three. D. The male salmon changes its shape and color. Then... The salmon arrive in the shallow water? Yeah, the salmon arrive in the shallow water. Number four. The fish try to jump. Yeah. Uh, one second. So no. Sorry, think number four, C, the salmon arrived in the shallow water. Number five, the male salmon fight. 
Yeah. Number six. Yeah, her eggs. Number seven, they gave us the answer. The salmon die and decay. Their body just goes back into the water, into the ground. Okay, good. Um, let's answer some questions from the video. So we had some questions. Which U.S. state are the rivers in? Alaska. Are the stockeye salmon born in the river or in the ocean? In the river. Yep. They tell us that's where they are born first, in the river. How many salmon finish the long journey? One in a thousand. So we could say one in a thousand or one in every thousand. So that's how much, one in every thousand. What are the four changes to the male salmon? The head, what happens to the head? Turns green, yep, that means it changes color. So it goes to a green color. The skin turn reds and smooth and the mouth I see longer you bigger. Yeah. yeah. The mouth grows longer, bigger. Yeah. Maybe that's fine. Mm. Do scientists know why this happens? So it's a do question. Remember, with do questions, you can answer with no first. No, they don't. Or scientists still don't know why. So still means because there might be a chance that they will. Until now, scientists still don't know why. Where were the salmon born? Yeah. So you go, you can write in if you want, in shallow waters to make a full sentence. Or actually a full sentence would be um, the salmon are born in shallow waters. What do the males do in the shallow river? Yeah, they fight over the females. That means because they want the females. They fight over the females. Why is it important for the parents' bodies to die and decay? Why? You could start the answer to or because uh, to become food for the next salmon. That's why their bodies die and decay. Remember decay, they go into the ground and become food, to become food for the next generation, for the next salmon. Okay, let's watch some short clips from the video um, to look at some vocab from the video. Okay, so okay, let's watch. The rivers are full of a type of fish called sockeye salmon. Then, at the end of their life, they return to the river and start their final journey hundreds of kilometers up the river. At the beginning of the journey, these huge brown bears are the biggest danger as the fish try to jump past them.
if the salmon get past the bears, their bodies start to change. Then, the female salmon lay their eggs in the bottom of the river. Okay, interesting. I think some words there was I heard you um, with return. So remember like a book. Oh, I need to return this book. So it means you need to give it back to the library. I need to return my book. Um, I need to, re if you buy something and you say, oh, it's not good. I need to return it. That means I need to give it back. So that's the word that I think um, it was a little bit hard for you. But now you know what return means. Okay, so now we're going to do something interesting. We're going to watch the video, but on mute, on silent. And uh, Franco, are you here? Sebastian, too, are you here? So Franco, Sebastian, too? I thought he came, no? Franco, can they hear me? Sebastian too? So Franco? Yes, teacher. Yes, okay. So I'm going to put the video again and you are going to tell us what is happening in the video at the same time. Okay? <laughs> you understand? Maybe I start with someone else first. Who would like to try it? <laughs> I think it's a very hard exercise. <laughs> Brian? Okay, I'm going to play the video and I'm going to play it on mute, but you are going to talk and tell us what's happening. You understand? Like you're going to, like David Attenborough. Do you know David Attenborough? Do you watch uh, the shows for David Attenborough? He, he does videos on animals uh, and nature, and he talks about what's happening in the video. You know him? No? He's an English, uh, yeah. So he, 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 he talks about the, I'll just quickly play this one. For the first cells to form. So you see how he's talking and telling you what's Some happening? Some of us began to harness the energy of sunlight, just as plants do today, and formed colonies. Okay, so you are going to do that. Um, yes, that's okay, Sebastian. I'll uh, listen to uh, Brian. He's going to do the exercise. Okay, so you're ready? I'm going to play it in silence. And you need to talk throughout it because it's like you're, you're a documentary. You're telling us what's happening. Okay? So I'll play it on mute and let's hear Brian tell us what's happening in the video. You can make up something different, but make sure it's nice, you're talking, not lots of silent because you've got to imagine it's like a professional documentary, <laughs> you know? You can make it up. You can make up your own sentences to make it fun, exciting or whatever, okay? Uh, okay, as I said, it is on silent because we are listening to Brian tell us about the documentary. So you just need to have a loud voice, uh, Brian. Uh, okay, so Brian is going to tell us what's happening in the video. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
to catch them to catch them for lunch good yes the bears are trying to catch them for lunch no. So you need to keep talking. Yeah. The end. Yeah, good. Yeah. So good, good memory. You remembered it. Good. <laughs> it's very hard exercise. Yeah. yeah. Who would like to try next? <laughs> Nobody. Everyone's. I'll pick randomly. Who would like anyone? Is brave. <laughs> Adria Adriana? <laughs> You have to be a commentary. <laughs> Tell us what's happening. Okay, ready? I'm going to play it. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> okay, Brian did it. See? Yeah, was it easy or hard, Brian? Easy. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just a little bit hard. Okay, now we're listening to Adriana. Now you can add different information. Doesn't matter. Okay, ready? Loud voice so they could hear you uh, online. Um. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
here, changes its color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What else? You must keep speaking, keep speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then it dies. Okay, no good. It's a very hard exercise. If I did a very hard exercise, <laughs> I know that's why it's a good exercise. Portuguese, yeah, that's why I want you to do it like without thinking, just quickly speak what you see. Um, okay, I might change a little bit of um, maybe we'll do it in groups. Um, so let's go with um, Lewis, Anna, and Shirley. Your one group. So you can prepare to talk about the video. I'm going to play it, and then you, as a group, can talk about the video. Um, because uh, you already did it, but that's fine. Oscar, Jonathan, Jimena, Sebastian, you can work together, and then Adriano, Edward, and um, Amalaris. I think that's everyone. Yeah. Or maybe because it's a big group, maybe if uh, Sebastian won. Uh, sorry, Sebastian won. Maybe if you go in the team. Yeah. So four, four, three. No speaking. Yeah. 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 So I'm going to play it again and then you're going to speak. We have a little bit of a different exercise. So Shirley, Anna, yeah. and Lewis are going to make up a story on this video, their own story. Okay, so come up. Yes. Why not? Yes, you said right now. Ready? Okay, we're going to listen to their story. They're going to be like the documentary telling us what is happening in this video. So this will be... Very, 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 very <laughs> Can you not repeat the more fast video? It will be more fast. Ah, see? Yes. No. No. Yes. No. The fish, the fish are swimming and they ask each other where the party is at the north of the zone. Suddenly, two bears arrive up and the salmon ask them if they know where the party is at. We don't know you say uh, the beer. So we are not going to eat when they continue to swimming around spear forest because they they have nothing to do so they swimming away. But 
one piece at the student here, you know, out of the water and the beers. As the fish, are you hungry? Um, wanting to go to a party, asking, hey, do you know where the party is at? Um, okay, next team. Are you ready? Yes. Um, very good. I know it's a hard exercise because you have to make up your own story. Okay, let's watch the last team. So again, I'm playing it in mute. And um, Oscar, Jonathan, Jimena, and Sebastian, one, are making up their own story, okay, to what is happening in the video. In the cold war of Alaska, the sun, the salmon embarked on an epic journey and uh, by Ansafak is is infected towards a homing ground, swimming against the current. Uh, they face traffic and wavelength in uh, unforgiving fiber. How do you build on the lot of the river for? And you can the of the filmer to you. It's already game of patent in a kid. We're not sure and for the wildest thing. The salmon is courageous, probably, with pain, gravity, while they get the best, while they can. Mm -hmm. uh, Dance of nature on the river, though the renewal of the line to the river, a cycle that repeats year after year, winding out of the negative and wonder of mm -hmm. white light. Mm -hmm. Those who are in the class of theater. Bring the spelling runs where they deposit their uh, their life to reach its culmination, but also its end uh, exhausted and weakened many who do not survive, survive, survive becoming, becoming a sustaining sense for other creatures depend on this vital symbol. Very hard exercise, but you did it very well. Um, okay, next week, uh, next week, um, next lesson. <laughs> the next week is holidays, next week is Christmas. Um, next lesson, we're gonna do the review. So we're gonna look at all the grammar that we learned. Remember, we're talking about journeys going to places, traveling, talking about travel money, how to ask. Remember, we know how to ask using can and could and how to respond. And we looked at, um, yeah, journeys. So we'll do the review tomorrow um, and we'll do some role plays as well. So that's next lesson. Review for everything, all the grammar that we learned for this. So the adjectives, the comparative and the superlative. Um, and yeah, that's our grammar. Okay, so thank you. See you all soon. See you tomorrow. Sebastian too. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, teacher. Thank you. Very welcome. See you tomorrow. Bye.